It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Hi folks and welcome to the Sam LaSant Show. Remember folks, if you're watching us on Service Electric Cable Vision in the Hazleton, the greater Hazleton area, we're all now on HD 513 as well as Channel 13. And of course, all my good friends uh, on Comcast 190 here in uh, the Pottsville area. And for those of you who are watching us on Channel 15, now remember, all of our local shows are in Channel 190, Monday through Friday, 7 to 11 p.m. Saturdays and Sundays, we have all of our local shows from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Comcast 190. Folks, I'm in front of, as you can see, the Schuylkill County Courthouse. And what am I doing here today? Well, I'll tell you. Today, we have three, um, people from the courthouse, no strangers, of course, to Schuylkill County. Uh, we have Christine Holman, who is our district attorney in Schuylkill County. We have Maria Casey, is the new clerk of courts. And we have Linda Marchuk, uh, who is the uh, uh, Schuylkill County treasurer. I have told you many times that what I try to do is keep you informed of what's happening in different counties, Luzerne County and Schuylkill County. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about the three offices that they have and what is going on in those offices. You know, we often hear, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, we're gonna do this. I like to do a follow-up sometimes as to, are they really telling you, are they telling you the truth when they tell you they're gonna do something, do they do it? Well, let's start off with our district attorney, no stranger to the Sam LaSanne show. How are you, Christine? I'm fine, Sam. Busy as usual, huh? Busy as usual, but always uh, can make time for you. I appreciate that. Now, Christine, um, when you were on the show, we, we talked, we covered about, you know, the criminal complaints. We talked about blight. We talked about different things. Let's just, you know, according to what I have here, um, the criminal complaints from 2014 were 2173. Two, uh, 2015, there was 2652. Right. So as that increases, what happens in your office? My office becomes uh, a lot busier. We have to, unfortunately, do more with less, but we do manage. I have great staff, and if it weren't for that, uh, Schuylkill County might be in trouble. Uh, needless to say, we don't complain, we forge ahead, and we fight the good fight every day. I've been uh, working on uh, many things uh, since I talked to you, Sam, originally, when I came on your show uh, before I even got elected. And I agree, I think it's important for politicians to make good on their platforms. Uh, you know, anyone can talk about what they're going to do, but what is it that you actually have done and are doing? I'm proud to say that I've been concentrating on uh, several areas, uh, one mainly being fighting blight in Schuylkill County. I know that's a big problem for many Schuylkill Countyans who really do care about their properties and comply with all laws. I have put out a blight toolkit, actually an addendum for 2016, and I have been circulating around the county. I did a presentation a couple of weeks ago here at the county uh, talking about certain criminal complaints that have now been filed against property owners who are disobeying the law. And we've had some great results. We've gotten some convictions. We've gotten a lot of pleas. And to me, we're, we're putting a dent. It might be small, uh, and I, I know it will increase, but we're putting a dent in these blighted properties. And I pledge to all Schuylkill Countyans that I won't stop on this project. I will never fall short. The next seminar that I'm having. I'm, I, I, want is, to, I want to ask one question mm -hmm. before you go to the seminar. The, the blight situation, so some people understand, could, can lead into a lot of criminal activity. Oh. Uh, so this is the reason it's, why it's called the broken window theory and what that means is if you're living in a community with dilapidated buildings and surroundings it's no order what does that do it breeds criminality it's a haven for drug dealers we don't want that in our towns here in Schuylkill County and so twofold ridding blight also means ridding drug dealers. We've got plenty of good people uh, working in, in the drug task force, local police, state police that are working diligently uh, planning and consummating um, drug busts. Those will be coming up 
and the public should be aware that we will not stop. My other um, issue is for the elderly. And when I campaigned, I was talking about helping the elderly avoid scams. I've come out with now a pamphlet titled Scams and Solutions, the scheming, crafty, aggressive, malicious people that swoop in and try to bilk uh, hundreds of dollars out of the elderly. I don't want you to be fooled. And I have sent invitations out to all senior centers, and many of you have invited me to your meetings. If you would like me to come to your meeting and haven't done so already, please contact myself or Brad Gotchell at 570-628-1350, and I will go through the scams and the solutions. You know, we you hit on a, a lot of interesting issues. I know the scams, uh, you know, and our elderly are so so nice, okay? People knock at the door and they say, you know, we're here to do this and they're, they're nice people, etc. What's the first thing? Just some tips that people should be doing when someone's knocking at the door or calling them on the phones or whatever. If they're knocking at your door and telling you that they're there for a certain purpose, ask for identification. Do not let anyone into your home unless you're certain that that identification is valid. If you have to, make a phone call. Uh, I certainly would be very leery today of cold calls. I don't know that it's accepted um, too much or it's an accepted practice. Phone calls are easy if you're being uh, harassed by telemarketers or, or any scammers. You can uh, let your answering machine pick up. If you think it's a legitimate call, contact an agency that regulates whatever um, whatever indicia was was made, uh, whatever they're asking for. And certainly don't be foolish. Use your common sense. Call me. Uh, I'm always available, 570-628-1043 or 628-1350. Okay, so in, in that uh, perspective, I think uh, you said on the show once <clears throat> that when someone comes, okay, and they represent, they're saying there's someone, get a card or get a phone number, number and then call that particular agencies that they're talking to. That's but however, right. sometimes they could have someone working with them. They, so if right. they give you a phone number, you could be calling someone and it could be their sidekick saying yes, etc. But I would say call the authorities. Call the authorities. <clears throat> uh, just like the IRS uh, and, and tax season is right around the corner. Someone's telling you that you owe taxes, you feel that you're, you're paid up in full, contact the IRS directly. And the IRS does not call you uh, and harass you. They will send letters. Uh, there's some protocol that, that the IRS goes through. All right, so I, I think basically, uh, you know, you, you're covering it with the, your uh, brochures that you have. And um, now remember folks, um, Christine is available to you uh, in Schuylkill County uh, for if you want to have her come to speak to you, particularly elderly. Um, elderly abuse, uh, let's touch on that a little bit because again, that's something that's very dear to me where people take advantage of these elderly people. Yes, it happens all too often, Sam, when an elder person loses family, uh, they lose friends, they don't have a confident, they don't have a companion. So they wind up feeling uh, vulnerable and that vulnerability could uh, spread to a neighbor or even a distant relative that feels they need some help but they're not really willing to help and that's unfortunate and there are many agencies uh, that can help out uh, for that uh, SEPA being one of them all right uh, senior services call the district attorney's office and we will point you in the right direction. You know, um, uh, it's unfortunate, Christine, that we have a lot of people who take advantage of the elderly, you know, and so your, your office covers um, a wide area uh, and folks, when she gives you the phone number, she means it, you know, you can call there. It's always best to um, give them a call and find out what's going on. Uh, Christine, uh, it's always nice having you on the show. Thank okay. you, Sam. Christine Holman is our district attorney here in Schuylkill County. And as I just said to you folks, what we try to do is keep you appraised of what's going on uh, in the, the uh, county. Uh, coming up next will be uh, Maria Casey. Uh, Maria Casey is the new clerk of courts. What's going on in the clerk of courts? What has she done and what will she continue to do 
uh, while in office. We'll be back right after this break. Welcome back to the San Luciano Show. Folks, remember, if you're watching us on Service Electric Cable Vision, we're on channel 13 as well as HD now, 513 in, in the greater Pottsville area, of course, on Comcast 190. Uh, and if you're watching us on the local channel here, channel 15, remember folks, uh, all of the local shows here in Greater Pottsville are now seen on 190, uh, Monday through Friday from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m., Saturdays and Sundays 11 a.m. to 11, p excuse me, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m., Saturdays and Sundays on Comcast 190. And remember, you can contact me anytime at sam at ssptv.com. Watch all of our shows on ssptv.com. Folks, I'm here on location in front of the Schuylkill County Courthouse, and we're talking to some of the uh, court officials that uh, uh, ask you for their vote, and they said they were going to do certain things. Uh, so we're going to see, are they doing what they said they were going to do? One of the persons that I'm going to be interviewing next is Maria Casey. Maria is the new uh, uh, clerk of courts. Uh, here in, in Schuylkill County. Maria, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Sam. How's your new position? It's actually going very well. Okay. Now, when you ran for clerk of courts, uh, because you were the uh, first assistant uh, to the district attorney's yes. office, okay. Um, when you ran the clerk of clerk, you um, had some issues that you wanted to uh, look at. But before we do that, so some people understand, what does the clerk of courts do? The clerk of courts in this county administers the criminal docket. And that involves uh, being the office to uh, handle deposits of bail monies, to handle restitution, which is paid to victims of crimes, to actually take those payments, to take costs and fines that are, are associated with various defendants who have committed crimes. We also issue subpoenas. You'll see uh, subpoenas with my name on ordering people to appear for various proceedings. Uh, members of my staff are present at all criminal trials and are responsible for handling the evidence as well as swearing in the jurors. Mm -hmm. uh, members of the staff also do uh, numerous other items of work, uh, include, including working with the prison, mm -hmm. various issues there. Uh, Paul Stefanik, who is my first deputy, I think you met him. Yes. He handles uh, millions of dollars a year in uh, posting checks and reconciling accounts. Uh, through the AOPC, through the, uh, the statewide docketing entry system. Mm -hmm. So there are various uh, functions that are done. The office also deals with constables, mm -hmm. deals with private detectives. And by dealing, I mean issuing licenses to those people. I swear those people in mm -hmm. on a regular basis. We also uh, work closely with the election bureau. And of course, we work with the district attorney with the county treasurer, with the courts, and with the sheriff's office. So, you know, folks, when you, when you think of the clerk of courts, you know, I'm always amazed because, you know, you're just a clerk, you know, but there is so much uh, that's involved, yes. okay, as you find out. So now, uh, when you campaign, okay, uh, you had a couple issues that you said you wanted to address. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about some of the issues. I know it's you're only in for a few months, but you know, uh, let's talk about the issues you wanted addressed and where you're at right now. One of the more important issues was uh, to make sure we had the proper internal controls. As I said, the office takes large amounts of monies on a monthly basis, on a daily basis, actually. Mm -hmm. So it was very important that those monies be handled in a way that they are totally accounted for. And we do have a two teller system. We have uh, numerous people who count the deposits mm -hmm. and then the deposits are taken on a daily basis now to be deposited to the treasurer's office mm -hmm. because we do not want money staying for any particular period of time uh, in the office. They should be deposited as received on a daily basis and that's being done. I also made sure that I have a bipartisan office. My first deputy is a Democrat. As you know, I'm a Republican. My solicitor is a Democrat. I wanted to show the people that I would pick the most qualified people to be in that office, Good not for you. based on political Good for affiliation. You. Good for you. So I, I've done that and I've held true to that promise. We're also trying to deal with uh, expungements. My office handles expungements. Mm -hmm. They have been backed up under the prior administrations for many months. And if you've done your time, you're, you should be allowed to clear your record in a timely manner right. so it doesn't adversely affect your employment prospects. Right. So that's something that I'm working on to get uh, rectified that they be more timely addressed. 
and a very important initiative that the district attorney and I are rolling out. I'm referring to my rule book under Rule 535 in cases where the defendant posts his or her own bail when the case is fully disposed of. That bail may be applied to restitution. In other words, a victim who uh, has had his or her, her business, uh, you know, uh, broken into, things stolen, if the defendant's case is over to the extent the defendant posted bail, those monies should be gone, be given to that victim to be made whole. So in other words, if someone broke into a place and there was like $5,000 mm -hmm. or $10,000 worth of damage, they were convicted, they had a post bail, and whatever that amount of bail that they, let's right. say it was $1,000 or I don't know, that money should go to make restitution. Absolutely, that's, that is definitely my position. Well, and where it's was it going before? Well, oftentimes it sits there and uh, it eventually would go back to a defendant, but often in the whole amount. My position is that should go to the victim. And, and the district attorney agrees with me and has agreed that she will make the motions. Mm -hmm. So going forward, that money goes back to the victim. Mm -hmm. And if there's any left over to go back to the defendant, fine. But if you commit the crime, you must make the victim whole in every circumstance. So that's something that we're going to roll out very shortly and start making sure that that is done. Because to my knowledge, that has never been done. And this district attorney has said she will do it and that she will work with me. So working with the DA's office and you also work with the courts. Around, yes, absolutely. Uh, and you just listed a number of, of, of people that you do work with, the constables, etc. Yes. Okay. So the uh, office itself is, is, is pretty rather important. It's a very busy office. We have anywhere between 13 and 15 employees. And it is uh, the, the number of items that each employee in their handles is at least 20 to 30 tasks. So it's a, an extremely busy office. And I would just point out, and the district attorney's office provided me with this, since 2013, we have had a drastic increase in the number of criminal complaints filed. Between 13 and 14, we had an increase of 135 criminal complaints filed. But between 14 and 15 calendar years, we had 479. Wow. And, and that is a huge increase. So. That, of course, causes more work for my staff, for the district attorney, for the courts, and it just uh, means that we all have to work harder and make sure that we address these issues. You having fun? I'm having a lot of fun. You missed the DA's office. I miss it very much. <laughs> Well, I come in the courthouse here, and it seems like everybody's, uh, you know, working. They're they're happy. Uh, I hope they're happy. Okay, but um, it's um, it's 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 a trying job sometimes. A lot of challenges. Okay. We work for the people. We work for the taxpayers, and and I think we're now working as a team. Yes. So important, folks. Maria Casey, she's a new Thank clerk you. of courts here in Schuylkill County. We're on location. That's why you hear the motorcycles. You hear the trucks. <laughs> Well, I want to hear birds. That's what I want to hear, birds. Coming up next is our new treasurer of Schuylkill County, and we'll find out what she's up to. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam Sancho, folks. Remember, 24-7, ssptv.com. My email is sam at ssptv.com. I'm here in location in front of the Schuylkill County Courthouse, and we're talking to some of the officials who are uh, at the courthouse. Um, I'm going to interview now Linda Marchalk. Uh, am I saying that right? Yes, you Mar are. Marchuk, who is a, our new uh, Schuylkill County Treasurer. First of all, congratulations, Linda. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate you coming here to Pottsville today. <laughs> yeah, the challenging uh, campaign. And uh, now, when you um, ran for a treasurer, what were some of the things that you wanted to accomplish? When I ran for treasurer, I wanted to take a look at government like I ran my small business. I wanted to be more cost effective and I wanted to be more efficient. Okay, so the treasurer's office does what? The treasurer's office is responsible for receiving the incoming funds of the county and we deal with pretty much every office of the courthouse. In addition, we also are responsible to make sure the taxpayers remit um, properly their um, tax money. We issue small games of chance, we collect the hotel tax, and then we also issue the various licenses for hunting, fishing, doe, and dogs. Now, speaking of those areas, you, you were talking to me about the small games of chance licenses. What, what's going on with that? Well, I'd like to um, put a, a note out there to all of our club licenses. Those are the organizations that have a liquor license. And unfortunately, um, 
around the middle of December, Liquor um, Control Enforcement told us that we need to ensure that all of our applicants have the required documentation with their EIN number, the IRS tax exempt letter, and have been properly filing all of their um, tax returns. If an organization fails to do that, unfortunately, they are not going to be eligible for a small games of chance license. And I think, unfortunately, that creates some additional problems for my office because I know many of those organizations rely on those fundraising yes. activities to cover their expenses and cover the missions that they set out to do. Mm -hmm. So how will they know whether they're in violation or what they need to do? Well, my office has been working with um, Senator Dave Argel and the three representatives to see if we can do something to help these organizations. Unfortunately, when we're dealing with the IRS, it's not a quick process. Um, most of them, um, if they need to get something fixed with the IRS, it's going to take four to six months. And unfortunately, most of the organizations are um, asking for their license to re be renewed within a 30-day um, time period. So if an organization has a license expiring March 31st of 2016, the IRS tells them it's going to be four to six months to resolve their um, EIN number and their tax exempt status, we don't have that much time. So we're seeing if some of our, um, our senator and our representative friends can do something in Harrisburg to help these organizations and resolve this issue for this year. Now, and in, in also we were talking about the hotel tax. How does that play? Hotel tax um, was um, a tax that was implemented by our Schuylkill County Commissioners in May of 2002. And when you think of hotel tax, um, Unfortunately, hotel tax does not just apply to hotels. It's motels, it's bed and breakfast, it's any homestead in, anybody that puts themselves out there by way of advertising for overnight accommodations. And that 3% tax is sent into my office. The county will keep 2% of that and then remit 3% to the Visitors Bureau. And that money is set aside to try to get people from outside the county to Schuylkill County to see the various attractions we have here to offer in Schuylkill County. Okay, so you're saying it's a 3% tax, the county keeps 2%, and the 1% left over, you said 3%, is that 3% of that 1%? I'm a little confused. <laughs> it, it is a little confusing. Yeah, yeah. So if, if we're collecting a 3% tax, essentially out of that 3%, um, the county is keeping 2% and the Visitors Bureau gets 98%. Okay, all right. So, so and, there, and that the county is using that, the uh, visitors are using that to promote the uh, people in, um, or businesses or places, uh, museums or whatever, such as the Yingling Brewery. Okay. Right, the Yingling Bureau, uh, Brewery, the um, Ashland Mine, the various wineries that we have here, um, some of the art centers that Schuylkill County has now gotten involved in, um, that's where that money is used. Okay, so money is derived from, in, for the treasurer's office. Uh, here again, if you're run, you ran a business, if it's run efficiently, efficiently you will be, uh, you'd hopefully um, make more money, okay, because it's being run properly. Uh, so your money goes into the general fund. Correct. Okay, once again, what I'm trying to convey to you, um, the our viewers, is that when you have good government, you have people who are in the office, and I'm hoping Linda does what she has to do, and, and Maria, and of course, Kristen Holman, uh, they uh, in turn bring dollars into to the general fund, which in turn hopefully will keep your taxes where they are, instead of increasing, correct? Correct, and my staff um, consists of five. They are all hardworking people. Um, our days go very fast. So we've tried to, again, implement some small, small things like um, just implementing scanning, uh, printing to PDF, trying to minimize what we use in paper, toner, copies. So small things do add up over the long run. What was your business before? I'm um, a co-owner of Northeast Pennsylvania Abstract um, doing real estate settlements. Oh, okay, yes, good. Linda Marchalk, folks, she's our new uh, county uh, treasurer here in Schuylkill County. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Sam, it's for a, having us. It's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure, folks. Uh, if you've just tuned in, you know, we show this show a number of times. Just go to our website, ssptv.com. Uh, we had Christine Holman, who is the district attorney of Schuylkill County. We had Maria Casey, who is the clerk of courts. And, of course, Linda Marchalk who is the new Schuylkill County Treasurer. Folks, I'll be interviewing the county commissioners and we'll see what uh, they're all about. Are uh, they continuing to do what they said they were gonna do? Uh, we like to keep our officials accountable and it's so nice that they are always receptive to, uh, to me when I give them a call. You're watching the Sam LaSanne Show, we'll see you next time.